Welcome to Surfaces and Splines, a series of SolidWorks video tutorials presented by the Damani Group. My name is Andrew Lowe. I'm an industrial designer with the Damani Group. In Surfaces and Splines, we take a look at the production tool running modeling of this uh, work flashlight. In this installment, we'll take a look at some ways we can build better chamfers and uh, have better control over what the chamfer looks like instead of just relying on the built-in chamfer tool in SolidWorks. So the chamfer tool is great for breaking edges on simple geometry, but the aesthetic chamfers can better be built by generating new edges and using either the parting line draft tool or using surface features to manually build the chamfer. So here I have this uh, the, the rough shape of the base, and I'd like to add a chamfer along here and along here. And in order to use the parting line draft tool to angle faces, I need new edges on the model. And there's two ways I could go about doing this. One is using the split line tool, and the other is using the split tool. And what the split tool does is take either a sketch or a plane or a surface and use, uses that to uh, split a solid body in two. So I now have two solid bodies uh, where there were, or there was once one. So we can see here I've cut the part using this uh, boundary surface and now I have this two, two bodies. Let's take a look at the surface that actually creates this and most importantly is what's happening at the front here. So at the front I actually need a touch of kick here. I need a little bit of draft to ensure that uh, I have the correct draft along this chamfer so that way the part can be ejected from the injection mold tool. And this face is actually a spline. I can't directly sketch on it but what I can do is use a projected curve to create a, um, just turn those on, to create a reference to create my boundary surface through. So I just have a sketch on the front plane here, and I've made it uh, coincident to a point of my layout sketch. I have one degree, a little bit of kick, and then I'll use the projected curve, and I'm going to take this sketch and I'm going to project it onto this face, and now I've created a new uh, 3D curve. It's got one degree there, and I'll create another one on the back side. And I'll use these curves to create my boundary surface. So I have curve uh, the two curves in direction one and a sketch. Note that I've made them a little bit longer. I want to try my cutting surface or my splitting surface to be a little bit longer than the, the mass it's splitting. I use surface extend to ensure it passes through. I'll split the body in two and now I'll use body delete to, uh, to remove that splitting surface. So here I have another draft reference surface. This is converted from a sketch in, or a sketch entity in the layout sketch, and I'll need this for building this chamfer. So the front uh, front chamfer isn't actually a true chamfer. Note that this uh, edge moves off a little bit. It's not entirely concentric with this first edge. So I'll need to build this with a boundary surface. So actually, before we take a look, let's uh, once again I've had another curve here. So I have this sketch. Note my uh, my draft kick here, my two degrees, and I've made it uh, this arc tangent to this construction line. I have a dimension here, and I've projected that uh, sketch onto this face here, and I have this curve, and now I'll create the boundary surface between this edge. I don't need a pro second profile in direction one, and I have this uh, bottom edge of the surface I just split and this curve I created. And surface cut removes that from the model and the body delete. So let's just use the, the draft analysis tool. Use the right plane, two degrees. I have a little tiny corner that uh, doesn't have the correct draft, but when I end up filling this edge, uh, that little corner will go away, so I'm not uh, concerned about it. Um, what's important to note here is the importance of that draft kick. If I go edit this sketch and change this back to zero, we'll see there's a large portion of the surface that's yellow. It means it requires draft. It's under our required uh, two degree draft. So always be cognizant of edges and um, their, the, their need for everything to have draft. This edge needs a draft so that way the, the surface built between this edge and this edge has the correct draft. So the second uh, portion of the, the fillet will be, or the, sorry, the, the chamfer will be a little bit easier to create. I'm just using the parting line draft tool. I've selected the, the edge 
and then the top plane and the required chamfer angle. So I like this technique uh, better for applying chamfers because I get to dictate exactly where the chamfer starts. I'm not so concerned about where this edge ends up, I'm more concerned about uh, this uh, style line uh, on, uh, on the part product. So that's why I like using the parting line draft tool. And uh, next week we'll take a look at uh, filleting these, uh, these corners here. So to recap, we can build better chamfers by generating new edges on the part, either by splitting the part or using the split line tool. Um, split has some benefits when it comes to filleting these corners instead of using the split line, which we'll take a look at next week. So be aware of pull direction. Sometimes you'll need a little bit of draft kick, and you can create these uh, curves on, on non-planar surfaces by using the projected curve function. So these uh, projected curves are invaluable when creating complicated geometry. So we're going to build the first portion of the chamfer with a new boundary surface. And we'll use the parting line draft tool to create this uh, second edge of the chamfer. So thanks for joining us this week. Uh, please follow the Damati Group on LinkedIn where we'll be posting new videos.